Hi friends, you are watching Gate Helpline and in this video, we will see Gate 2017 CS question paper subject wise solution for DBMS. Friends, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get all the latest updates from our channel regarding Gate exam. So friends, let's start taking questions one by one. Question number 16 is, the following functional dependencies hold true for the relational schema R and the dependencies are v tends to w, v w tends to x, y tends to v x and y tends to z. Which of the following is irreducible equivalent for this set of functional dependencies and the options are a, b, c and d. So friends now we will see explanation to this question. Here in this question we are given with schema r with the following functional dependencies and the functional dependencies are v tends to w, v w tends to x, y tends to v x and y tends to z. Here from the first dependency we can calculate the closure of v that is v comma w and with the help of v w we can get x with the help of second dependency. So in the second dependency by calculating the closure of v we know that we can get x. So in this w is extraneous attribute as if we can determine w and using that v w can determine x. So now we will go for third dependency that is y tends to v x. In this dependency we can write it as y tends to v and y tends to x. In this dependency y tends to x is extraneous attribute because after deleting x we can determine it using y tends to v. As you can calculate the closure of y and you can achieve x. So there is no need of this dependency that is y tends to x. Now we will see each option one by one and try to eliminate that. So for option C, y tends to x is an unnecessary dependency and for option B, w tends to x is also an unnecessary dependency similarly for option D. So in this case option C, D, B, all the three options are wrong. So friends as we have discussed answer to this question is option A. Option A is irreducible equivalent for this set of functional dependencies. Consider a database that has the relation schema EMP having EMP ID, EMP name and department name, an instance of the schema EMP and a SQL query on it are given below. This is the EMP schema and this is the SQL query. The output of executing the SQL query is dash. We will see explanation to this question. This is our EMP schema and this is our given query which we need to evaluate. So we start from the inner query. Here we need to select department name and count of employee ID in respective departments. As department AA the count of employee ID is 4. We allies it as EC and map with department name as department name and count of employee ID as num. In outer query we need to find the average of ec.num where ec.num is the count of employee id having ec alias. So the output of the inner query is shown as this. So here we are having department names with the count of employee ids or the employee the number of employees which the departments are having which we can see as this. So the average of num is 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 upon 5 equals to 2.6. So as per our explanation answer to this question is 2.6. So question number 41 is consider a database that has the relation schema EMP having EMP ID, EMP name and department ID and department, department name, department ID. Note that the department ID can be permitted to be null 
in the relation EMP. Consider the following queries on the database expressed in tuple relation calculus. First, second and third are the tuple relation calculus queries. Which of the above queries are safe? And the options are A, first and second only, B, first and third only, C, second and third only, and D, first, second and third. So friends, now we will see explanation to this question. So first of all, our question is, what is a safe expression? A safe expression is one that is guaranteed to yield a finite number of tuples as its result. Otherwise, it is called unsafe. So given department ID can be permitted to be null as given in the question. So first query is this and the result of this query is it gives employee names who do not belong to any department. So it is going to be a finite number of tuples as a result. Second query is this and it results in employee names who do not belong to some department. So this is also going to yield a finite number of tuples. Third one is this query and it gives employee names who do not belong to same department and this will also going to yield a finite number of tuples. So all of these queries are giving some results which are finite and thus are safe expressions. So therefore option D is correct. So friends as per our discussion answer to this question is option D that is all the queries first, second and third are safe. Question number 46 is consider the database that has the relation schema CR having student name and course name as column and instance of the schema CR is as given below. The following query is made on the database that is T1 tends to pi course name row student name equals to SA CR T2 CR divided by T1. The number of rows in T2 is dash. So friends, now we will see explanation to this question. In this question, we are given with the following query is made on the database. These are the two queries. The number of rows in T2 is question mark that is we need to find. And the table is given as CR having student name and course name as the two columns. So first of all we will see T1. So in T1 the projection is for course name that is it selects the course name where student name is SA from CR table. So if we see this here student name SA we find as SA 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 in these three rows. So it will select the course name and the course names are CA, CB and CC for SA student. So the output of T1 is CA, CB and CC. So now we check the T2 query. The T2 query is CR divided by T1. That is it, the output of T1 query. So it results in the name of the students who enrolled all the courses that are the output of query T1. So we check for those students who are having CA, CB and CC as their course. So first we had already checked for SA. Now we check for SB. SB is enrolled in only two subjects. So this is not going to be in the answer. So then we check for SC. SC is having CA, CB and CC. So SC is selected. For SD we are having CA, CB and CC. SD is also selected. For SE we are having CA, CB but CC is not there and for SF we are having CA, CB and CC. So you can see that for SA, SC, SD and SF. Note that SE is not having one subject and SB is also not having one subject. So the output is 4. So the output of T2 will be 4 rows. So friends. As per our explanation, answer to this question is number of rows in T2 is 4. 
So friends, thanks for watching our video. Please like, subscribe our channel and share our videos to appreciate our work. If you have any doubt or question, please comment below and keep watching our channel for videos like this.